Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It's fantastic to have you here because we are working on a falchion sword, which is a very exciting weapon to be working on. We have successfully put a gorgeous hamon on it. In yesterday's episode, you saw me engrave the bronze all the way around our guard. And today, the task, what I need to do is as follows. We need to make a handle for this whole ensemble. Now, the handle on here is meant to be really quite ridiculously short. It's meant to be 85 millimeters long. Now that seems like that wouldn't work because this is where the guard sits. That's always off 85 millimeters. So of course, just like I did, you would be thinking to yourself, well, that's ridiculous. You've got to make a longer handle. Well, historically, falchions indeed had that ridiculously short handle. And you'll see why as we go on further in the project. It has something to do with the pommel. So we have to think about the wood that we're going to use. And obviously we have a good selection here. Here. We have some beautiful pieces from Ben Greenberg, but I think we're going to go with tough, strong, pretty hard, and definitely very dense cocobolo wood. I know it was a long time ago that I said that I wasn't going to use the mill for wood much longer. We still are. Sorry, old pal. More wood milling to go. I'm going to get this crammed up square, get the tilting vise off, get the good vise on. And we're going to cut that down, mill up some square references so that we can then broach it out so that it fits our steel. been working on the handle block, Alex has been working on hand sanding a finish onto our guard. With the guard nicely sanded up, Alex has done an incredible job, it is now very exciting that indeed we have a block, we have a guard, they snug together very nicely. And the next step with, oh, does this feel good? Oh my goodness, this feels like a cool sword. The next step is for us to take this and shape it into our grip. Pause here, because a lot of you might be wondering what happened to our test falchion when we bent it 90 degrees. Well now, I'll let you know. Here is a little clip from a few days ago. Don't try this at home. Thank you, I appreciate you saying that. I forgot. And that's 90. Oh dear. That is God. the beauty of a hamon. We have soft steel supporting a hard edge. What's really interesting is they curve in different ways. Keep going down. Well, I would call that a decent bit of an angle. <laughs> oh boy. Wow. And now it like that quickly goes back to straight. This, this is what a hamon is supposed to do. The thing they put in a Japanese samurai sword, bending it straight after it bends in combat, this is it. Right, let's break it. Oh wait, actually no, maybe we could do some other cool stuff. 
Let me climb that tire. So what's amazing is even though we bent it that whole way, there's no chipping on that material. It's deformed just a little bit, but it's not chipped. Holy moly, the damage that we're doing to this piece of steel is unbelievable. There's obviously no edge on this, but clearly, 1095 with a hamon does all right. So that's past 90 degrees. So that's past 90 degrees that it does that. And then it's almost straight like that. That is astonishing. To think that heat treated in these simple methods, we're able to make something that does not crack doing that is really no, crazy. No. And then how about if we go to past 90 the other way? This is almost not quite 180. I think we should try 180. Let's get a piece of pipe. All right. There it goes. And it has snapped. 180 degrees. Wow. You can see how the different materials react. This hard edge is straight, and this is just completely twisted and contorted where it's soft. Just absolutely fascinating. This is what's crazy about this material. This is an anvil. It's a Brooks anvil, notoriously hard. On the edge, where it is hardened, it dents the eye anvil. On the spine, where it is soft, it doesn't touch the anvil. Look what it does to the spine. Pretty unbelievable that you can bend a falchion to 90 degrees, and this is the remarkable effects of the hamon. Super interesting, super fun. We now have a broken test falchion, and we're now gonna get back to where we were. So the cocoa butter has been roughed out. It's at a 320 grit, like this. And something interesting you might note is the back side doesn't look square to the front, and there is a reason to it. We are going to have a twisted, canted pommel, anti-clockwise, and that is all part of the short grip. It is all part of how the original falchions would have had their pommel assembled, and so I figured in the grip itself, we're gonna get that cant started. Now, I wanna do a leather wrap because I've never done it and it seems like a really fun challenge to try and do. And this is the thinnest leather I have here in the workshop. This sadly is also all I have of that leather. This is 1.3 millimeters thick. Here is some more, 1.68. The general principle, as far as I understand, is we need to wrap it in leather and we're then going to skive, which means we're taking an edge and that edge, we're gonna thin it down and narrow it down so that we have this scarfed area almost so that they can wrap over itself. It's all wood glued together, wrapped in cord. For that, we need a little allowance on the end to fold over the ends so it's not this frayed material but is the nice smooth side out. We also need to have a little overlap all the way around. So, bearing that in mind, as I plot out how much leather we have, it gets a little, no, a lot concerning because our overlap will not be huge if we go this way. We'd have plenty of overlap this way, but not much material to skive and fold over on the ends. You'd think that all of that would be followed by some sort of master plan. So now we need to skive and thin down all four edges. This is a skiving tool, I think. And by running this across, it's gonna thin down the edges. Oh, hello. Just more A little angle. Oh. Look at this. Oh. Whoopsie. Well, it didn't skive until it skived too much. So now we're gonna try that thicker leather. This is the 1.6 mil piece I had. So with that skived, I'm going to moisten it, and we're gonna put some dye on it once it's moistened. And so now I need to fold over our end edges the right amount.
I'm gonna peel the seams over, see if I can trim off a little. I don't think we need all of that. So we've just done this. I don't know if this is doing anything, but I'll, uh, I'll check back and let you know once I've wrapped the rest of it. It didn't work so well, so I think I need to change the shape of the leather before we form it, because of course there are different diameters in the middle and on the end. We're gonna sort that very, very soon, so I hope you subscribe so you can see the very next episode in the Fauchin build. A pleasure as always. Thank you very much. I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.